What's up everyone? Joe with ECRM here at our on and off premise adult beverage session in Florida. And I have with me John Egan from Fior de Soleil. And uh, we're going to talk about the challenges with making low or no ABV wine, right? Because lately uh, a lot of, you know, that's a big trend is no ABV, but in other categories, right? We see it in beer, right. we see it mm -hmm. in spirits. So uh, thanks for joining us. And, um, you know, tell us what are the challenges? Why is it so hard? Uh, the biggest challenge you'll find with that is in the process of removing alcohol, usually through reverse osmosis, mm -hmm. um, you're filtering it, spinning out the alcohol. So you're stripping it out of the flavors out of it. So you think about filtering your favorite coffee through multiple filter pads, mm -hmm. you're going to dilute the flavor. And if you do it too much in the current technology to get to that zero alcohol, you're left with just a, a finish on the wine that is tastes burnt and acrid. Mm. So there are other technologies that are involved that can get you down to that 6% alcohol that doesn't trip away all the flavors, so it still has some complexity. Mm -hmm. Who wants to spend money on a product that has no real flavor mm -hmm. and no finish to it? So it's about developing those things. and. One of the pieces that people, where that will be, that zero alcohol, especially products, are really gonna be developed, companies will invest in chemical engineers mm -hmm. who specialize in the building blocks of, of molecules and flavors and the compounds and things that they can do to create the real flavors of alcohol. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that alcohol adds to a product is uh, weight on the palate, mm -hmm. richness, and also a level of sweetness. Mm -hmm. So how do you achieve those three things without using alcohol? And that's where those engineers come in mm -hmm. to understand what the building blocks are. So you gotta sort of Frankenstein it together. Yeah, you really, yeah. Gotta, you really <laughs> gotta Frankenstein it to, to put it together so that the final product is what the consumer wants. Gotcha. Now this doesn't happen, or you, there are, these challenges don't exist as much with beer or, or spirits when, when they're doing the no or, or low ABV? The, or do they have their challenge too? They do have their challenges, but they're not as uh, complex as in okay. wine because mm -hmm. a wine grape has far more uh, chemical compounds in it naturally. Mm -hmm. And the attributes of the soil and the environment that the grape is grown in, mm -hmm. and then the barrels. Um, so any type of fermentation will generate a type of alcohol. Mm -hmm. So you're starting with sugar and adding yeast and fermenting it so you get alcohol from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So you have to figure out a way to lower the alcohol. And if you do it by picking your grapes at a lower sugar, you're gonna have a poor tasting wine and nobody wants that. Mm -hmm. It'll be thin and won't have a lot of flavor, structure. So there's more complexity in mm -hmm. creating a wine. When you're creating a clear spirit like a, a vodka or a, you know vodka especially, you know that's grain. You're fermenting it out, mm -hmm. distilling it, and you're done. Yeah. You're not aging it in a barrel. You're not looking for that. You get more complexity from vodka by triple and quadruple distilling it mm -hmm. to refine it to remove things. That's the whole thing. People like that. The more times it's distilled, the cleaner it is in taste. Mm -hmm we don't want to filter as much in wine because we want to preserve all those complex flavors. Mm -hmm. So when do you think, or, or what is needed, the steps needed to take in order to start heading towards that? You mentioned, touched on a little bit, like hire the like chemical engineers? Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you need to have those people who understand the science mm -hmm. uh, of flavor building blocks, uh, capital investment really, because the technology is where it's gonna be. Mm -hmm. You need to collect the information. So those, those state-of-the-art equipments, they're very expensive. And you need to actually have the people who can take the information mm -hmm. and then understand it and act on it. So it's really gonna be technology driven to deliver the closer to zero alcohol products that have flavor to them. Um, in the wine space, um, you can achieve it uh, quickly by taking um, a fully fermented vinified wine um, and then blending in zero, you know, grape juice mm -hmm. or even water it back. But again, you get a thin tasting product. So it's going to be the engineers. And at that point, it'll probably be in the vineyard where those uh, chemists and, and botanists figure out how to 
propagate a grape varietal that will have a naturally lower sugar content so that if you ferment it out fully, that natural alcohol will be lower. So then if you put it through the process to further reduce the alcohol, you're not stripping away the flavors. Mm -hmm. You're not starting with that bigger base. So there may be some like genetic editing or gene editing involved along the way to get to that point. That stuff is already going on. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how far out do you think we are for getting some really good no no alcohol wines? Uh, zero alcohol wines, I'm going to say we're at least five years mm -hmm. uh, away from the technology to, and, you know, to catch up with the desire of the consumer. Mm -hmm. um, but for low alcohol, you know, we're, it's already happening. You mm -hmm. can get quality products that people enjoy drinking that are around 7%. Mm -hmm. Um, the technology that we've had has allowed us to grow grapes at a higher level of sugar to ferment at a higher alcohol. Um, now the trend is back to going for lower. So it's just about marrying that technology. Awesome. Uh, last question. Tell us a little bit about uh, Fior de Soleil. Fior de Soleil is a family owned company started around 2005, 2006, uh, located in Napa Valley. Um, we average about 3 million cases a year in production and sales across uh, multiple brands, primarily private label control brands. Mm -hmm. And we also have a select family of brands ourselves that we make and distribute uh, through the three tier system. So our operation is to not just be a manufacturer for people, but we create brands in partnership with our customers for the long term so that they're sustainable. They can run for not one or two years, mm -hmm. but 10, 15, 20 years and they deliver that kind of margin that the account is looking for. And they're sustainable from our standpoint because we have access to some of the best fruit sources throughout the state of California. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot and enjoy the rest of the, uh, the session. Thank you very much, Joe.